Hello, and welcome to Startup Voice with Ina Ivanchik. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what happens to convertible promissory notes when they reach their maturity date. Now, let's first talk about what's a maturity date. Convertible notes are based on debt instruments. They are debt instruments with some twists. Each debt instrument is given out for a particular term, and at the end of that term, it's supposed to be repaid, unless something else has happened to it before it reaches that, the end of its term, which is called the maturity date. You have issued some convertible promissory notes. Uh, you might want to take a look at them and see what the maturity date is. Uh, this is usually defined in the on the first page in the first couple paragraphs and it can say either a particular date or it can be an on-demand maturity date. Usually uh, it can be demanded to be returned after a particular period of time has elapsed. Uh, for example, the language might read on demand by the holder hereof any time after the one year anniversary of the issue date. So that that be something like that. So until it's actually until repayment is actually demanded, the note has not matured. However, after the one year anniversary of the issue date, the note holder can call the note at any time, and then it would need to be repaid. And as we know, that's not really why you issued the convertible note in the first place. You weren't planning on repaying it. The idea has always been that it would be converted. So if your convertible notes are about to reach their maturity date and they haven't converted yet probably means you haven't had a qualified financing. So what do you do now? There could be there could be a few reasons why you haven't had a qualified financing. Uh, one of those reasons could be that you haven't needed to raise more money. Things could have been going pretty well for you and uh, maybe you've just been self-sufficient, uh, even profitable. Maybe you just didn't need the money. Alternatively, uh, maybe you've had trouble raising the amount of money that would qualify for qualified financing or raising any additional money at all. Uh, whatever the case, it's, it's not in the interest of at least one of the parties to repay the loan. If things are going really well for you, and this is why you haven't had a qualified financing, then your investor doesn't just want his money back plus a little bit of interest that's occurred. Uh, he actually wants to have a share in the company to share in this growth that you're experiencing. On the other hand, if you're having trouble raising money, if you are low on cash, then the last thing you want to do is repay them. So, so what happens? What happens when we reach this magical date and you're technically supposed to repay the loan? Well, the first thing we should check in the note document itself is whether you really are supposed to repay the note on maturity. So the maturity date concept is going to be there, but we should check our conversion provisions to see if anything special happens on maturity. A lot of notes will provide for automatic conversion on maturity. And so we should definitely check to see if that's in our note. Conversion on maturity can be into one of several things. It could be either into common stock or into preferred stock. And if it's into preferred stock, it could be into uh, previously outstanding preferred stock or into a new series of preferred stock. So we should definitely check to see what it says before we do anything else. And we should also consider depending on what it says, whether we actually already have those shares that we can use uh, to do the conversion very easily, or if we need to authorize those shares additionally. One other important point is to consider whether it says that the conversion is automatic or it's in the discretion of the investor or sometimes even in the discretion of the company. So you, you have to see what you negotiated back when you were first issuing the note and then go from there. Let's suppose that your note is convertible into a new series of preferred stock. So by definition, that means you don't have those shares yet. And in order to convert, even if it says that the conversion is automatic, in order for it to happen automatically, you first need to take certain steps to actually authorize those additional shares in your company and define their rights. And this can be sort of a process and it's not complicated, but it takes time and a little bit of money as well. Depending on the situation in your company right now, it may not be the best time to spend that time and money on this process. 
And it may be that your investors are even willing to um, temporarily forgo that process. So the, the first thing that you should consider is whether it makes sense to extend the note. If, for example, you think you're going to have a qualified financing within the next six months to a year, um, and when I say think, you know, kind of realistically, right, that's in the plans, you have discussions which look promising, you're optimistic that this is really going to happen and you're able to convince your investors that this is going to happen. Um, in that case, it's going to be usually pretty easy, assuming you have kind of reasonable investors, to get them to agree to extend the note for an additional six months to a year to allow you to do the qualified financing. And in connection with that qualified financing, then their note will convert on the terms uh, set out in the note itself. Sometimes your investors will ask you to uh, give them something a little extra for agreeing to extend the note. But it sort of depends on the relationship, on the leverage, on uh, how supportive they are of the company. And, and this is why it's you know, so important to have the right investors in the first place. Because uh, really it's in everybody's, if you're realistically going to raise more money soon, it's in everybody's best interest for them to extend the notes. But because in some ways they're doing you a favor and they could call this note and uh, you'll be in default and they could sue you for being in default. They could basically you know, put, the, put your company under if they wanted to. Sometimes they'll ask for additional terms that you didn't originally negotiate. One of the options is try to extend the maturity date and then have the conversion happen. Um, into a qualified financing rather than as set forth in the note based on, on the maturity. If your investors are not willing to do that or if um, it doesn't look like you're going to have a qualified financing anytime soon, the other option is to actually go through with the conversion. So to do that you have to, and we're still talking about the new series of preferred stock, you have to have your board and shareholders approve an amendment or an amendment and restatement of your certificate of incorporation or your articles of incorporation, depending on the state in which you are. You have to actually uh, do a certificate of amendment or an amended restated uh, certificate of incorporation in which you will either just add the additional series if you already have other outstanding preferred and they'll have kind of substantially the same rights. Or if you only have common stock, you're gonna to have to do the amended restated and add the whole section about preferred stock and their rights. And you'll have to see what, again, the note provides, whether it specifies the rights that the preferred shares uh, are supposed to have or not, if it's just supposed to be into preferred stock without specifying any spe specific rights. You can also, if we're in, in the vein of negotiating, uh, you can also try and negotiate if it says new series of preferred, but the company is not really in a position to afford to go through all these motions right now can either try and negotiate for the investor to pay for this to happen, um, whatever, cover your legal expenses to, to get the preferred, or to have them agree to take common stock. So those are some of the options. Uh, best case scenario, of course, is um, if they're converting into, suppose, common stock and you already have enough common stock authorized, then the conversion can happen uh, very simply. Um, you should still have some kind of a note purchase, uh, no conversion agreement to document it but at least you don't have to amend it or state the charter. Uh, you don't have to get board and stockholder consents. So it's much quicker, much easier. But the key to this is take a look at the note. It should contain everything you need to know about what happens on maturity. And you go from there. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this. And if you did, please sign up for the channel. Subscribe to the channel. And um, I hope to see you soon in our next episode. Thank you.